What's up friends, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're gonna to talk about the Sony A9 Mark III and this is gonna be a little bit of a different video for me so let's just chill, we'll get a little bit nerdy and I'm gonna cover everything that makes this camera special. And I had the camera in for a couple weeks to shoot with over the holidays and I also was able to shoot with it in New York at the launch when it came out in November. So I've had a bit of time to gather some thoughts and I think this camera is kind of setting the bar super high for pro mirrorless cameras and it's gonna to be tough for a lot of cameras to match this moving forward. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay up to date with my latest videos because looking at the analytics, only a small portion of you guys are actually subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything that I'm putting out because there's a lot of cool stuff coming soon. So to start off with, the most obvious thing about the Sony a Mark III is that it's the first full frame mirrorless camera to have a global shutter. Now this makes it exciting for sports photographers, uh, flash photographers because it's going to allow for higher shutter speeds without banding and jello and it's also awesome for video as well because you're not going to have to deal with that rolling shutter jello effect that we see in most cameras. Now I did shoot with this camera a bit. I didn't get too crazy with it because it was during the holidays when they sent me the camera and I kind of wanted a break but I was mostly just doing some promo branding images for a singer so there's lots of that in here. Um, at no point was I ever really pushing this camera super hard. This camera is way more than I would ever need so I'm probably not the best person to show you what this thing's fully capable of but uh, I still want to share my thoughts on it and show you some images because it is very impressive. So typically most cameras have a rolling shutter which I'm sure you've all heard of. A uh, rolling shutter is basically exposing the sensor from top to bottom and it doesn't expose all the pixels at once. So because of this there's going to be some limitations so the most obvious one is the jello effect because it's reading the top of the sensor and then if there's any movement you're going to start to see kind of that warpy look to it which we always call jello or warped or artifacts and this happens in photo and video and also some cheap led lights you'll see that flicker and that's due to the refresh rate based off the way that the sensor is being read now a global shutter exposes the entire sensor all at once. So all the pixels at the exact same time, and this is gonna eliminate any of that rolling shutter or jello effect. It also allows more options when it comes to flash photography as well, because now you can also shoot at way higher shutter speeds with that flash, since the sensor is being exposed at the exact same time. But they're not cheap and they require a lot of bandwidth and fast readout speed, which is why I think we haven't really seen them in the mirrorless market outside of cinema cameras. Now, obviously, you know, there's lots of fast stack sensors out there and they're rocking straight up electronic shutters, which is awesome, but you still can't really avoid the rolling shutter effect when it comes to movement and some lighting conditions, even if it is really fast. So hopefully that gets you up to speed on what a global shutter is. The camera looks like your typical Sony Alpha body at first glance, but they have redesigned the grip. So it's a little bit different around the shutter button area. It now raises up a little bit taller and it's rounded off. And you're really gonna only notice this if you jump back and forth between an A9 Mark II or an older Sony body to the A9 Mark III. Now the grip does feel nice and it is good to see that they're trying to innovate a little bit in design without getting too drastic. But outside of that, it's pretty typical, nothing major except the screen. This is the best screen on any Sony camera next to the Sony a7R5, which it was first introduced in. And I was hoping they put this in some more cameras, but this is really the only one. They call it the four axis multi-rotating touchscreen. And it's awesome because I like a flip screen for shooting video, but I prefer a tilt screen for shooting photos. And with this mechanism design, you can do it either way. The screen also covers DCI-P3 color space, so it looks pretty good. And you'd think by now, Sony being an electronics manufacturer company that has some of the best displays in the world, they would start putting them in their cameras, but this is, this is the best we're getting. Oh, there's also a new button on the front of the camera. And I also made another Instagram reel about this because it's pre-programmed right out of the box to be like a turbo button. At least that's what I'm calling it. And this camera can, do insane 120 frames per second while shooting photos and that's raw and jpeg and i'll talk about that a bit later but the custom five button on the front was pre-programmed as a turbo boost so this lets you shoot something like say you're shooting 30 frames per second and you want more speed you hold down that c5 button and it'll instantly toggle to 120 frames per second so you can get those quick fast burst rates when you need them when it comes to image quality i was kind of curious what it'd be like working with these files and Honestly, it looks great. I had no issues with dynamic range because that is one of the drawbacks with a global shutter is that you take a small hit in the dynamic range department. But everything that I shot looks really nice. Uh, the other thing about this camera is its base ISO is 250 coming from 100. So you can go below 250 if you wanna go a little bit lower, but the actual base ISO is 250. And like I said, most cameras are 100, but from what I could see, it looks as good as anything else I've shot on Sony and it's as good as the Sony a7 IV, which is what I mainly shoot with. Uh, it's 24 megapixels, 
So it's not super high megapixels, but it needs to be in that sweet spot for how fast this camera is. Now when it comes to autofocus, it has world-class autofocus, the best of the best. And uh, it's got obviously the AI dedicated processor in it for pose estimation and subject detection tracking. Um, and we've seen this in a lot of Sony's other cameras and that started in the A7R5. And I have to say pose estimation in these newer Sony cameras is so awesome. And you don't really notice it when you're using the camera, but if you go and use an older Sony camera, it's really obvious when it doesn't have it, especially when I'm doing portraits and doing face detection, eye detection stuff. Most of you know I'm a portrait photographer and I don't shoot a lot of sports, but I was kind of lucky and found this figure skating thing going on not too far from me. So I decided to get out the recorder and show the autofocus tracking and show how well it's doing. And this is with the older 24 to 70 G Master. I know the newer Mark II is so much better than this lens in terms of autofocus speed. Even with this old lens it did a great job so coming back to the high speed burst capture of 120 frames per second like i was showing from that little figure skating test there there are other cameras out there that can do that the nikon z8 can also do 120 frames per second but that's jpeg this camera is doing 120 frames per second raw and jpeg from that global shutter that's 24 million pixels reading at the same time 120 times per second now if we do some calculations that's like 2.8 billion pixels per second. That's crazy. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments, but that's pretty insane. Now it can only do that up to 192 shots before the buffer drops down to a slower rate. But I've been using these Lexar Gold CF Express A cards for the last couple months and they've been awesome. Shout out to Lexar because these cards are fast and they can do up to 900 megabytes a second, which is perfect for this camera. This camera also has a new feature called pre-capture, which will actually capture photos before you even press that shutter button down. So clearly they've designed this camera for sports photographers so that you don't accidentally miss any of the action before you actually take the shot. Now there's different ways to set this up and it'll actually capture up to one second if you want to set it to do that before you even take the shot. So you have to half press the shutter and that triggers it. But when you have this enabled, it's pretty clutch because you'll get the action before and after you took those shots. Now I mentioned that the global shutter opens up some other options for flash photographers and I asked Sony if they'd lend me one of their flashes that's compatible with this crazy high speed shutter because um, you can actually shoot up to 180 thousandths of a second with this camera and have flash sync which is crazy so I know there aren't a lot of flashes that are compatible with that but the flash they lent me was the HVL F46RM and it had no problem keeping up. Okay, so I think that's all I really wanted to cover on the photo side of things because this is a hybrid Sony camera. We got to talk about video and Sony has some impressive video specs in this camera as well. So this camera can shoot up to 4K, 120 frames per second, 10 bit 422, full frame with no crops. This might be the first Sony camera with no crop. It also shoots 4K 60p oversampled from 6K and it looks awesome. And the best part is there is no rolling shutter thanks to that global shutter and uh, kind of makes you think that this could possibly be the best Sony camera for video. But uh, I did watch Gerald's dynamic range test and it's slightly lower than some of Sony's other mirrorless cameras. So that might be something to consider and something you should probably watch if you want to check out his video to learn more nerdy stuff. Also the base ISO in S-Log3 is ISO 2000, which is extremely high for normal shooting, especially if you're in the sun or midday, uh, you're gonna have to use some strong ND filters. You're gonna need an ND filter anyway, but it's quite a bit higher than your typical 800 or 640 ISO. Now you can push the camera lower than 2000 ISO, but you're gonna start losing some of that shadow detail. Now I didn't really do any high ISO tests, but Daryl did, so watch his video. Now I did shoot the last two YouTube videos and all the B-roll with this camera and it performed great. It also has dynamic active stabilization, which is really cool. And I've shown that before in other cameras like the uh, ZV-E1, but it already has solid IBIS. So that dynamic active stabilization smooths things out, especially when you're shooting handheld, but that does come at a large crop because it's doing some digital stabilization, but it will give you like 30% better stabilization over active stabilization, which is what I usually leave all my cameras set to. <sighs> Anyway, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. This is part of the new YouTube set. This is the corner. I'm not quite done yet, but I will give you a tour when it's finished. I just wanted this place to feel like it's 1978. You're just hanging out with your best buddy in their basement. And uh, this, is, this is my recreation of that. And I think it's a cool spot. We also shot some photos here, which is also a great spot to shoot photos. So uh, 
I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's wrap this up. I covered all the benefits of this camera. No banding, no rolling shutter, no mechanical shutter to wear out, no shutter shock. It's silent. It's insanely fast. It has very good video specs, solid image quality. And you're saying, Lee, that sounds great. But how much does this camera cost? Because this camera's not cheap. It's $6,000 US or $8,300 here in Canada. So. I could never justify the price of this camera, but I also don't need a camera like this. It's way more than I could ever make use of. Um, this is for professional action, sports, wildlife, high-speed flash photography. And it's great to see that they're pushing the boundaries of what they can do with a camera because this will trickle down eventually into more affordable cameras. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. We covered a lot of stuff. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. As I mentioned, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Person to show you what this camera's full of be full, pl 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 and that gets you really good results and solves a lot of that solves solves everything is going to have to be as good as this good as this arc three and this video is going to uh, and uh while i was using it uh there are other there are blah, 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 there are other you don't want to accidentally mish mish mishmatch. mish, 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 mish.